So, all right, I'm going to be honest with you. I was very skeptical of whether or not the Elgato Stream Deck would live up to its price tag. And I have to say that I was wrong with that skepticism because this is an amazing product and it does things better than any other product that I've messed with that's somewhat similar. I've used Touch Portal, I've even used Loop Deck, um, the Loop Deck Live. None of them are as nice as this product. It is amazing and I want to explain to you why. Now, it's not the physical device that sells this to me. While it is great build quality and you can see all of your stuff with these buttons, the fact that it's a button that you push in and you can tell whenever you've made contact with something that you're messing with, that's a positive. It's the software. The software is what really sells this. It's user intuitive, tons of plugins, and there's like a little marketplace of where you can get a, all the free plugins for this thing. And it's super easy to use. That is why I love this product and why I think you might as well if you've never messed with it. What's going on guys? Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And I, I can't even stop looking at this thing. It just looks amazing. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the Elgato Stream Deck. This is the Mark II. This is uh, one, 15 keys or 15 buttons on this. And we're not going to be taking a ton of time or spend a ton of time messing with the physical uh, attributes of this device. There are buttons with screens on them. They are push buttons, not a touch screen, which is actually something you might like. Uh, that was one of the things I didn't like about the touch portal um, or loop deck or touch portal is that you don't have any actual physical buttons you press in there, you know, playing with a touch screen. Um, it's got a little base that it goes with. I currently have mine plugged in for this review, so I'm going to try not to mess with it. And it's got a detachable USB type C on the back of it. So you could take it out of this and it will lay a little bit more flat on your desk or you can throw it inside of this, give it a bit of an angle. And um, I would think if you want to attach this to like something like your keyboard, you can probably go on Thingiverse and maybe find some uh, really cool models to uh, possibly print out or 3D print and maybe clip it to your keyboard. That sounds pretty cool. So enough with my rambling. Let's get into the meat of this video. Let's jump over to the software and I want to show you and kind of explain to you what all I'm using this for, what I want to use it for in the future and why this review is something I might actually tack on another video six to eight months from now to really give you guys an in-depth feel of how I've kind of evolved my setup and use case with the Elgato Stream Deck. So right, we're now over at the computer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Elgato Stream Deck software because this is really where the magic happens. There's tons of stuff that we could talk about in this video. And I just want to kind of explain some of the basic things that you can do with it and some of the more advanced things that you may want to do with it. Let's get started first with game capture. If you've got any kind of Elgato product that lets you do um, like a capture card that lets you do flashback recording, screenshots and stuff like that, you can add these little things in. It's simple as dragging them and dropping them in, selecting your device. So that is a feature that you can get out of this. If you use OBS Studio, you can actually set your scenes, decide to record, go live, change sources, all that by just dragging and dropping stuff. We have soundboard options. We can do soundboard stuff. We can control the stream deck by setting the brightness, uh, page indicators and stuff. If we wanted to know exactly what page we're on, there is once again, like a ton of things in here, but I want to focus on some of these other things. Like the integration with Streamlabs is something that's pretty cool. Um, we can do things specific to our computer. We can launch websites. We can do hotkey setups. Um, we can open certain programs. Uh, type in text and even control multimedia. We can have integration with Twitter. I don't really know the point of changing your name on Twitter with this, but you can tweet out stuff through here. Great if you're live streaming to say, or I guess maybe you might use that to say live or something in your Twitter name. So that might actually be a promotional thing uh, people might do. If you have any of these kind of lights like I've got that are Elgato key lights, I've got a key light here and a key light air there. And essentially I can control them by turning them on, off, setting the brightness, adjusting the temperature, all that cool stuff. And even these LEDs in the background are set up through the Elgato ecosystem. So I can essentially change the color of those and do the same thing as well. There is integration through Discord to be able to do stuff like mute your microphone, deafen, uh, change the voice channel you're in. This is gonna be a common thing. One of 
the Discord groups I'm in with my friends all the time is literally at the bottom of every single page so I can connect, uh, mute my microphone or deafen at any point in time. So that's really nice to have. And we've got an advanced launcher um, through a plugin. And most of these other things are actually going to be plugins. So I'm not going to dive into those too much right now. But we've got stuff that gives us advanced launching commands for games and YouTube statistics, NVIDIA shadow play uh, configurations and the ability to set macros for those. Essentially, um, we got super macros. I've not even touched that yet. Something I'm going to delve into hopefully very soon. And then we've got this right here. This is what I think is really cool. The default OBS stuff is not really a lot of meat on the bones there, as I would say, for the features you have. But this uh, bar raider OBS tools gives you a ton of settings. So that's something we'll kind of delve into in a little bit. And we can control Discord volume and stuff like that of different members. And we can even go in here and do a lot of advanced stuff for Windows on the fly. And there's even Spotify integration if you have Spotify premium. So that is a quick overview that I wanted to show you guys of some of the basic features that you may want um, and you can find. Now, I wanna go ahead and also click on this tab here and go to this tab. Um, I wanted to show this off because there are a lot of different things you can do. We have the ability to add in the discover section is great just because you get to see things that you might not know that are there, but we've got the ability for plugins. There are actually a lot of plugins more than I thought there would be, and it seems like they may be adding more on a regular basis. We have icons, um, so if you don't want to do your own custom icons or go find them somewhere else, you can actually find a ton of different icons here. Elgato has some included as well. Um, you can literally just go in here and add some icons and you're good to go. Super cool. We have music section where we can add in music clips and we can even do sound effects if we wanted to. So we can add in sound effects to our stream deck and press it and play sounds or play certain music, which is also a really cool feature. To do any of this stuff, it's just as simple as clicking on the download or install buttons. That easy. That's what I love about this so far. It's just super easy and to the point. So now I want to, since I feel like I've laid the table of you can add icons, you can go ahead and install plugins, and there's like a bunch of basic stuff in here as well. One of the things I really wanted to showcase to you guys was what I'm using it for right now and give you a practical example of how you can utilize this for your live stream, for your productivity, or for whatever you're using the Stream Deck for or you want to use it for, because you may not know yet, because um, I feel like it's a very powerful tool. So let's get started with kind of going through the way I've got this set up. So my first page is going to be kind of a general page that I will stay on when I'm browsing my computer. And we can see that actually whatever's on on the Stream Deck, just for those of you that might not know, is actually what's showing up inside of this Stream Deck application. So I can actually see what's going on there. So this first page, like I said, it's just general stuff. The second page is for whenever I'm gaming and we'll delve into some of this stuff in a second. And then the third one is actually for videos like this. This is my recording setup. Um, this is really, really cool. So this launches OBS, this sets the OBS profile and the scene settings. This turns on my lighting to the recording setup I want to use. And then this starts the recording. So it's really neat that I can do all of that literally everything I need to start setting up my recording setup just with presses of buttons. Now we also can travel through the different scenes that we have here by just setting them up through this one plugin and we can just set the scene name which is really cool so if you're live streaming you could add tons of these if you decide not to do like a bunch of extra stuff like I've got or you could put folders inside of um, your OBS section if that's what you wanted to do and you could utilize this perfectly for live streaming as well as recording that's kind of what I want to showcase because I don't do as much live streaming as I used to and for recording this is actually going to be a joy because I can just click one button I'm in the right place and then I just go down the line and set all this stuff up the way I want to make sure everything's working properly and then set my camera however I want it Tab four is currently a work in progress. Um, I'm kind of been revamping some of the uh, business stuff we've got here for how to tech. Um, but what I've actually got set up is essentially statistics for the YouTube channel. How many current subscribers do we have? Um, the amount of videos we posted. And there's actually quite a few uh, different other statistics and things that you can add in there that just calls through some kind of API and all of these plugins that I've messed with so far 
um, actually have detailed documentation on how to set them up through either their GitHub or Wiki or whatever they use to kind of explain that. So let's go back to my first one and just kind of dive through some of these different menus to showcase to you the usefulness of how cool this stuff is. So I want to actually showcase Discord first because um, so I want to go ahead and showcase Discord first because I utilize Discord for a lot of things. And these buttons right here save me so much time from having to toggle out or use different hotkeys. I just got this sitting right on my desk and whenever I need something, I just press a button and I'm muted, I'm deafened um, because sometimes I'm working on stuff and people start talking and I just need to get out of there and it's really useful. Um, but I like this first button because this connects me to the Discord channel that me and my friends are in almost every single night. I have the ability to press this button next to it to mute my mic if I start talking to somebody else or I get a phone call so I don't be rude in the Discord. I don't have to be rude. And then this one right here is if I'm working on something or once again I get a phone call and everybody's being and kind of loud in the discord or i'm playing game and trying to clutch up i can press this button right here and i don't hear anything in the discord they don't hear me i'm focused i'm doing whatever i need to be doing and the last but not least if i click this button again it disconnects me automatically so that is something that has become one of my favorite things and one reason why this is going to be sitting right next to me during all my gaming sessions or anytime i'm working on the computer and i just so happen to be in discord because i'm in discord a good 75% of the time when I'm on my computer. So very useful. Now let's jump into some of the other stuff that I'm utilizing this for. In the general section, I've just got this folder here and essentially the folder lets me set up um, different items underneath. Setting up a folder is as simple as right clicking and creating a new folder. And then you can double click on that and you can add stuff to it. Once again, adding stuff is super simple. If we wanted to launch a website, we can drag this in, type in the URL, and it will launch the website. That easy. Applications are cool, but I've also got Elgato Lighting, and this is one of my favorite things that I've done in um, a long time, a long, long time. This is one of the coolest things I've done. So on this, I've got um, lighting profile set up for a bunch of different things. So for example, I can press this red button right here. It sets up this lighting profile. This is what I'm gonna be using for recording and I will tweak it accordingly. So I always have the best lighting set up possible uh, for my stationary camera that's right there. Um, when I wanna chill with the boys and we're hanging out and playing games and get our webcams on, maybe I don't want the lights as bright. So I press this button right here uh, below and the lights get a little bit more dim. Or maybe I'm just focused on a late night gaming session and I don't want the hassle of other lights. I press this. I'm focused, I'm in the zone. And if I want to turn off all the lights, I can press this button right here. We'll turn everything off. This button right here will turn everything on and we can control the key lights individually with these buttons up here. And let's say the right one's not bright enough. We can press this, turn up the brightness or we can even turn it down. We have the ability over here to control my LEDs by turning them on and off. These are Elgato LEDs, but if you have LEDs through something like Hue, um, the Hue lights through Philips, I guess, or Govee or anything like that, they also have integration and plugins inside of Stream Deck software. So be sure to check that out if that's something you want. I can dim and brighten my lights with a press of a button here for my LEDs. And I even have a color switcher. So I press this button. I need to change this because you actually have the ability to set different images for different states, something I'll talk about in a second. And um, yeah, I can change it from blue to orange at a moment's notice. And whenever I've done jacked up my lighting to the 10th degree, I can press this record button right here. And then everything goes back to the way it was before I started messing with it. So that's nice. Let's talk about um, images. So for example, if you were wanting to set up your own lighting profile um, or folder and you wanted to add stuff to it, once again, setting up a button for a website is the same as setting up like a folder as far as the icon. So this right here is a folder and this is just loading a website. You can tell by the title of it. Um, you can set an icon just simply by clicking on that plus and or you can click on that arrow there and we can install other packs or we can just decide to pick whatever we want. So if I wanted to go with this icon, I set it. It's already on the stream deck. There it is right there. So 
You can add that stuff really easily. If you wanted to, you can set it from a file so you can create your own. Um, I've done that with some of these. You can see they kind of match. I plan on updating all of these to my own icons because I just want them to kind of match a same theme. Um, once again, there's tons of themes out there that you can grab, or if you wanted to, you can get super crazy. And I think this is amazing that Elgato's done this. I wish this was integrated into the software. I don't like having to do this on the internet, um, but you can actually click some of their stuff and you can add things and adjust colors. You can do whatever you want with this. You've got layers, you can adjust, you can add gradients, um, create your own buttons, even if you don't have photo editing software. So that's really cool. So I'm gonna delete this cause I'm done. And let's talk a little bit more about some of the other stuff you can do. The snipping tool is essentially just kind of pinned here. So if I need to get a screenshot of something, I press it and I get a screenshot. I can kind of decide what I want to screenshot. So that's cool. Um, I've got this tab here. That is uh, that green one there. Um, I can actually change the playback device if I want my headphones to be playing audio or if I want my TV to be playing audio. So I can just choose whatever one I want there. I can see the status of all my hard drives and even my NAS and stuff on the network. And we can see how long my computer's been on and the ping or the latency between my computer and Google's DNS server. So that it, for nerdy speak is to see how bad my internet is being at the moment whenever I'm trying to play video games. Um, this last one here is just telling me whether or not my ethernet uh, plug on the back of my computer ethernet port is actually connected to the internet or connected to a network. Um, let's talk about we're, we're just going to go over here into the game section because this is where the rest of uh, the story is. You know, I've got a folder opens up my games. I've got the ability to take screenshots with the NVIDIA um, shadow play, and then I can also do the instant replays, which are nice. I can toggle the FPS on and off or even save the last few minutes of gameplay. Those are cool. Two things that are going to change gaming for me on this computer um, because of this stream deck are these two things right here. So I have to actually press these because these are like sub menus inside of each other. So I press that and if I'm in Discord, these are the different people that are in my chat that I'm currently in. So if I join in and I've got like person one, person two, uh, person three, person four um, and five, whatever and so on, there'll be different tabs, right? But up here, it gives me the option to turn their volume up. Pressing this mutes them, pressing that turns the volume down and I can control individually all the members inside of the Discord server I'm in, their volume levels I have set for them. So nobody's like extremely loud when I'm trying to play a video game or if I was live streaming, um, people aren't too loud. So let me get out of there. And then the next one is awesome as well. So I'm going to press that button and we can see here we have the ability to tr uh, control volume of things like Discord, uh, my browser and OBS. I have to say these icons look kind of garbage right now, but on the stream deck, they don't look bad. So I don't know why these look bad here, but they're not too bad. I haven't actually messed with trying to replace these images. I don't know if they'll stick with the programs, but there is, you know, pages and stuff too. So you can kind of go back and forth and do all of your audio devices. So if you're in a game or you're live streaming and you don't want to have to tab out of that game, um, you can literally just press those two buttons and control all your discord stuff and control all of your windows audio sound stuff, which is really, really cool have to say um, this is a product that is going to stay on my desk and I may even buy the XL version. I didn't think I would want it, but the more that I look at it, I would like to have the discord stuff and the sound stuff on one page all the time and then have all my other junk. So I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I've been thinking about it. So let me know what you guys think about this. So all right, guys, that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, get subscribed and turn on notifications for future videos from How To Tech. And let us know in the comment section down below if you have an Elgato Stream Deck. If so, what kind do you have? If you're using an alternative, let us know what that is. Um, we've messed around with some of those before, but this by far has to be my favorite. Um, let me know what plugins you guys are using or what you're using your uh, stream deck for. If there's something different that I'm not using it for and it's kind of off the wall or just something curious, let us know in the comment section down below. Um, 
If you guys want to help further support the channel, then maybe think about becoming a member. Get early access to videos, discounts on merch, community-only posts, and emotes, much, much more, all that stuff. So big thanks to you guys, and big thanks to you guys as well for watching this video. This has been Chad from How To Tech, helping you take your tech to the next level, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.